Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement guide and this time we are getting it all in Call of the Sea. A brilliant and beautiful looking adventure game developed by Out of the Blue, published by Raw Fury and is available to buy and keep forever for £16.49 or because Game Pass is super sexy, it is on Game Pass right now as of this recording so once again I ask, why no you got Game Pass huh? Why? Go get it now! Anyway, so we play as Nora Everhart, literally the most English adventurous sounding name on this planet, who has to go finding her missing husband, who seemingly is lost on this weird island with four or five of his expedition crew. It's a surreal and epic looking game and very enjoyable too. Now as for the achievements, you get your normal story related ones. We also need to be finding one secret object in each chapter, so six overall. There's also usually a missable achievement in each chapter, but very easily done. And the big boy, collectibles. Oh yes, the people's favourite thing. Now there are literally hundreds and hundreds of things to look at in the game, and to collect etc, but not everything is needed to count towards the particular achievements. Of course following this guide should get you them no problems, but in the comments section below I will put a timestamp of everything we need to collect to get said achievements. So if you miss one, you can easily locate it. Now when you do collect one of these sort of important ones that go towards the achievement, you will hear and notice a little scribbling sound and a small book icon in the top right corner. That means that is again the collectibles and logs we need, but if you don't hear a scribbling sound when you look at something, that's fine as it is not needed. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing and we cleared that up. Hopefully. Uh, we'll be looking at getting this done in around two to three hours. So, with that being said then, let us begin. And in terms of controls and everything, it's, you know, it's pretty much your standard game, you know, you use the left directional stick, press A to interact with objects, um, eventually we'll be able to sprint, I say sprint, she does like this light-hearted jog. I mean, she is an English adventurer and when, <laughs> have you ever seen a Usain Bolt type adventurer? I don't think so. Nobody sprints that fast, but we can anyway with the right trigger. So for now, this is just the uh, prologue. All we're doing is just swimming basically straight forward until we get to an item at the end, and then we'll sort of wake up from this weird dream that we're in. I've been here my entire life. I'm trapped in here. These stairs. I'm... Climbing these stairs again. I need to get out. The voices are calling me. My old music box. It's broken. I have to fix my old music box. I, I have to get it. I have to... Those horrible dreams again. I've had them repeatedly ever since my mother died and left me that music box in her will. Harry always said that old family heirloom had something to do with my family's strange disease. If the doctors won't give us an answer about your illness, I'll search for one myself, you said. And in that search, it seems you lost yourself. I don't think I'd ever... Pardon me, madam, but the island is in sight. We'll be lowering the boat in just a minute. Oh, uh, so yeah, by the so way, much. if you really like uh, posh English accents, then this is also the game for you. So first things first, as soon as we get out of the bed, take a look to your right and down on the desk. And that's basically going to get us our first collectible. I'd always dreamed of traveling. And you could just hear, when you pick it up, you could just hear the sort of faint scribbling sound. So again, like I said, I'll have um, timestamps anyway down below, so if you do miss anything, but of course just try and um, follow along with what I'm doing. So pick up this post office receipt right here, which is on the desk, then we're going to pick up our gloves and our diary, because um, uh, Nora's got a bit of, I don't know, it, it looks like leprosy and chlamydia are all rolled into one. Not that I know what either of those look like, but you know what I mean. Hmm. Ah, the amazing adventures of Nora Everhart. 
So a lot of the time we'll be pressing Y to open it up our journal and it basically what it does is give us hints on how to solve puzzles and get through the story etc. So for now as you could just see you've seen the 506 which is her house number. So that is what you need to open up this briefcase. So you uh, use the right trigger to move and then it is 506. And this will get us another two collectibles that are needed in this briefcase. So, you can, uh, the dagger doesn't count, but we take it anyway. Pick up all the items. Um, you don't have to listen to everything she says. You can just literally uh, press back and then move on quickly. But it'll still count, so, all good. But make sure to turn this picture around, because the brass key is another collectible we're going to need. And I know it's all cute and everything, oh my dear old pal, blah blah blah. Literally my partner calls me bumhead and gal and and that's fine with me because that's hilarious. And cute little names there. Eh? Anyway, we're done. So now we can move on. And uh, basically what's gonna happen now? We're gonna get an achievement for completing the prologue and we're going to actually start the game. And it's gonna be about a two minute sort of boat ride to get to the first island. So just enjoy the sights. And then just take it all in. Beautiful. We'll be back to pick you up in three days. I really hope you find your husband there, madam. I hope it too. I'll see you in three days then. But please be careful on that island. You know what the legends say about it. I'll take care. Thank you, Captain Hudson. Well, here I am, in the middle of the ocean after traveling across half the world. Just miles away from where my husband is supposed to be. You left a year ago to search for a cure for my affliction. Your letters kept me close to you, but suddenly they stopped coming. What happened, old pal? What did you find? Whatever it was, it led you to hire a crew and set sail from San Francisco to Tahiti. And from there, to this place. An island in the middle of the Pacific that the locals refused to even name. Everything is familiar. So familiar. As impossible as that may sound. Is this the island I dreamed about? This, this can't be a coincidence. Also, I can hear another Iron Maiden track coming up now. Call of the Sea! Yes, that... I, for some reason, every time I say Call of the Sea, it just reminds me of Run to the Hills by Iron Maiden. I don't know why, and that was a pretty pointless bit of commentary, but we are almost there anyway. I should be used to it by now. You know me. There's definitely something strange about this place. So we have made it and the first thing we're going to be doing is heading directly to the left and we're going through a sort of tunnel and eventually when she stops yapping, talking to herself, making herself look like a crazy person, we should get the ability to sprint. There it is. So you either click in the left stick or use the right trigger. So go down this little path and then we're going to see these little sort of unu type things in the water, whatever they're called. Click on them and that counts as you can see by the book icon in the right hand corner top right hand corner that counts as a collectible and you can also check which ones you've got by having a look if you press Y you can have a look at the notes and the logs in the book and if you've got the same thing that I've got throughout the game then you know you should be good but again even if you do miss something by the way you can always go back on chapter select and it tells you what you're missing and again like I said with the comment uh, the timestamps in the comment section below Hopefully you shouldn't have too many of an issue. So we're going up this sort of path now. And the first thing 
here we're going to do is have a look at the right hand side mechanism and interact with that. That's basically going to get us another log. And you have to do this before we fix it, otherwise you'll have to just come back. Press the lever on the left hand side and then we'll have to actually go and find this missing bit of mechanism. So turn around, go directly left and have a look inside this box. W. Those are the initials on the brass key. It opens it. Go ahead then, interact with the piece of paper inside. This is obviously going to be another collectible. Now, you will see me actually pick up things that you we might not actually need, but it's just one of them that, that there's literally so, so many. I'll obviously be telling you what you need to collect and what you don't anyway, so don't panic if I look at something and just go on. So head to the left and then directly left again, and you'll see these two little bits of flowers. And what we're going to see is just up from where these flowers are, there's going to be a little stone that we can interact with. So you can just see on the screen there, and that is where the missing mechanism is. So obviously go ahead and pick that up. It's not a magic mushroom, so, so don't even try it. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. I don't even know what a magic mushroom looks like, because I'm not that kind of guy. So head right and then back up to where the mechanism was, and we're going to pop that in, and then use the lever, and that will get us through. It works. This may be the first time I trespass a private... Right then, so first thing we have to do, we're going to see just to the right of us now, we're going to see a little campfire, as you can see, and then beyond that, on this little bit of box here, have a look at the photo, and that is a picture of the expedition crew, so, um, yep, yeah, Harry, old Harry, was here. Where are you now? Where is everybody? Where did you and all your crew go? And also take a look at the piece of paper, piece, uh, piece of paper as well, I don't know why she's talking to the picture. Where is everybody now? Where are you, Harry? He's not going to answer, hun. It's 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 a picture. Um, but yes, anyway, so go down the little path, which was just to the left of the box. Again, we're going to be grabbing a few more collectibles. Again, always be sure to be sprinting, because if you're just walking, it's going to take a long, <laughs> a lot longer than usual. So have a look through this sort of wooden board sticking out here, and we're going to see a mountain. That's one of the collectibles that we need. Also... It's going to help us with a puzzle a bit later on. So go directly behind you and go down the hill. Yeah, denser. Yeah, you can you can certainly smell a swamp, can't you? Mmm, smells like ass. Gross. And anyway, over the board, <laughs> there's only one way we can go. Interact with this. Uh, unu, it's called. Sorry, not a, not a uwu. It's called an, a, a unu or unu. Anyway, that should be the second one. So to the right of that, we're going to go over these boards. And just to the left, just sticking out of the water, is the third one, which is to do with the fishes. So, like I said, these are all collectibles, but this is going to help us with the puzzle. Uh, you can actually do the puzzle without getting these, but of course you'll miss out on the achievement as well. So go back on yourself, and we're going to be going down the left path this time. And there's one more that we need to be collecting, and it is the bird, Unu. Oh my, this is so beautiful. So when we get to this beautiful little place, go to the right, and it's the one with the bird on that we need to interact with. So that will be another one. And before we leave this honestly gorgeous looking area, see the big rocks sticking out? The only rocks sticking out? Go up on that, take a look down, and there's going to be a box in the water. Interact with that, and that is going to be our first secret objective that we have found and that is going to be the first achievement or the first missable achievement so happy days now we can just head on through this is basically now a shortcut luckily so we don't have to go all the way back so interact with the lever <laughs> obviously otherwise you're not getting through and we'll be coming back to this area in just just before we finish but for now head to the right and Basically, we're just, again, back at the beginning of the chapter. So, keep sprinting forward and going through it all for the moment. From the moment we started dating, no matter how harsh the truth. So, we're back at the area where we found the photo earlier on, but go to the left and you'll see this, like, uh, bridge that we need to get um, bridged up. 
and this little bit of tiki. Now, what you normally do is, when you collect things, press the white button, and this is what you should be looking at. You just need to put these in a particular order, so it doesn't tell you which order, but you know what you need. But of course, you don't need to worry about that, because I'm about to tell you what to do. So the first one, move it across to the sun, where it's got the sort of three arrows pointing up. The second one is going to be the birds, with the sort of arrows pointing to the right. Leave the third one, they are the mountains. The fourth one then is the water, and the fifth one will be the fish. Press the button when that's done, and then the bridge is going to... Um, Open for us. I was going to say collapse in on itself, but that's not right. But do not cross the bridge yet. Do not cross the goddamn bridge yet. What we're going to do is head back to the beginning where the boat was for a missable achievement. So when we get back there now, the boat's basically going to be gone. So we just need to interact with the little bit of sand, uh, get the achievement, have a little cry about it in posh English adventurer type cry. And then we can actually move on across the bridge. Motorboat. It's gone. And I had my luggage in it. All my things gone. And the tide was so weak. I also found it hilarious. Where did my motorboat go? If I ever think of the word motorboat, I don't think of an actual boat. I think of doing this with women's or men's boobies. Uh, <laughs> right, so uh, I'm a bad man. I'm sorry. Anyway, so before we cross the bridge, oh, Jesus, we're going to take a look now. We're going to take a look at the log. Now, basically, again, with everything that you've collected, pictures like this should appear. You can go left or right on the D-pad to skip through the pages. So as long as you've got all the pictures and everything that I have and they're all filled out, that means you've basically collected everything and you should be good to go. Again, like I said, don't worry, though. If you have missed something, you can... Um, chapter select and come back through it and uh, take a look and see what you've missed otherwise this is the end of chapter one how long have i been walking so then, welcome to chapter 2. We're still in a bloody beautiful part of the world, it seems. Um, but the collectibles are about to get a lot more collector bubbly. So, immediately we're going to have a look at this tiki thing. This tiki statue looking out of the table, out of the ground, sorry. And then have a look on, on top of the roof of the hut. And that will be the second sort of collectible. Straight away, head to the left. Have a look at this tiki sticking out of the ground as well. That's already a third collectible. Now you can have a look at this, it does not count as a collectible, but still have a look at it anyway, it's just in case, always worth checking them out just in case. Go inside, have a look inside the box, and that is a picture which again, does count towards a collectible. Again, if you do get paranoid or worried, you can always just have a look, completely have a look around and grab everything that you can, just to be safe than sorry if you really want to do that. But there's nothing else of any value, so... Uh, go out of here and go straight to the next tiki hut and again have a look at the next tiki standing out of the ground with a pretty little butterfly on it have a look at the missing sort of emblem uh, that does actually count towards our journal so head inside and on the desk you will see this diary entry now there are a f quite a lot of things to actually have a look at and collect in this uh, little hut but like this one, they don't count. Only the diary entry seems to count. So you can have a look all here. There are photos at the back. We don't pick them up because they're not needed. But again, like I said, if you're feeling a bit paranoid about it, be my guest. Pick them up. Take a look. It's it's a really good story. So it's always worth picking them up and sort of piecing everything together anyway. But once we're done here, sort of go back on yourself now. And uh, we're going to go past this little weird fish statue. And oh my god, somebody died. So, have a look at the grave. We're going to have a look at the receipt on the grave. And we're going to also interact with the gravestone itself. Big Roy. Well, he's not so big anymore. He's underground. Pretty small now. But anyway, 
from there, we're going to head actually into the next Tiki Hut here. Again, have a look at the one sticking out of the ground. That's going to go into our journal. So that should be four bits of Tiki's. And then go behind, behind and beyond these boxes and interact with the back of the gravestone. And that will also count towards our journal. So we are done with this little, uh, nice little area now. By the way, why do they always make islands like this? They make it look so beautiful and so awesome, but they're ones that make you want to go crazy and kill everyone you, you're with. Why, innit? it? You might as well just make it all look ugly so they'll kill each other faster and job's done. Anyway, we are heading <laughs> up the hill. Sorry, just in case you didn't notice. And there is another hut that we're going inside now. There's a little puzzle that we need to do here. But have a look at this sort of, it looks like a turtle. It basically is a turtle. And this is the first sort of real puzzle of the game that we need to be doing. And all we're doing, you're just putting all the bits of scraps of bits of paper together. It should take no more than just a couple of minutes. See, I told ya, nice and easy, cheesy does it. So we're gonna go into the back of the sort of hut now, and we're gonna interact with the microscope. We need a lens, but we're going to, uh, which we need a bit, little bit later on, but have a look through the microscope first. We're gonna look at the stranded ship, which is going to be another journal entry. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, excuse me. So now we need to interact with this Tiki. This is another puzzle, just like the end of the first one. Again, have a look at your journal. I'm not going to explain, you know, what you need to do in order to get it. I'm just going to show you basically the order and then we can move on with it. There are loads of other YouTube videos explaining these puzzles, which are absolutely brilliant. So I advise you to go and check them out if you want a more detailed explanation of whichever puzzle you want. So, first one, have a look. It's basically the three sort of arrows, I'd say, pointing up. For the eyes, it's not this one, it's not this one, but it's the one with the weird eyebrows, I think, and the big nose. I, I'm not very good at explaining either. You can leave the mouth as it is, and then it's the squid arms at the bottom. I am awful at explaining, so I apologize. So, press A uh, to interact and go under here. This is also where the second secret objective is. So the first things first, have a look at this sort of slab of stone uh, that is on this table here. I've never seen anything like it, but it looks cool. Have a look. Uh, take a look at a few the the item at the back there. There's going to be a picture. You can have a look at this sort of mask or whatever that is. And this, the picture at the back, that is the second uh, secret object of the game, which will get us another achievement. So make sure to pick that up. 
before we head out. If it's just a picture they were after, you, you might as well have just left it out. What was the point in doing all that puzzle for a picture? But hey, secrets makes you lose your mind this island. It's like you're on an awesome acid trip all of the time. Or magic mushroom or something. Anyway, we're heading back down <laughs> now. And if you didn't see it, the first time through on your travels, there is an elevator that we can go up. That big, empty bit of rock right there. But with the slab of stone that we picked up, we can now use it. Damn, Harry. Bruh, why you got so many secrets, yo? Stupid air Anyway, we can interact with it and go up, so that's what you need to be doing. Oh, oh my. Oh my goodness, what happened? And once we are up then, if you head to the right you can see the medical tent, you know, the big white flag with a big red plus on it. Just in case you don't know what a medical tent looks like for some reason. Have a look in the box and take a look at these two bits of papers right here. Again, you don't have to wait for Nora to finish yammering and explaining. You can simply be all like, hey, screw off. Take a look on the table. There's another piece of paper. There's going to be another one on the floor as well. Just by the side of you. Stop it. And he is losing his mind. Have a look at the back, there are three pictures, that looks kind of unlucky. And we got the uh, chlamydia leprosy hands going on here. Oh, it's Nora's chlamydia leprosy hands, <laughs> what's going on? But make sure to have a look at those two, you can have a look as well at the paper at the back, but that is not needed or important, so we can head on out. Ugh, I can't stand the smell of medical equipment. From here, head right and you can see there is a pretty obvious big hole in the ground. We're going down into that hole in the ground. Toting the hole, baby, we're going diving. But head down the ladder. This is basically a, a puzzle which we're going to need to end this particular chapter. But of course, we've got a few things to collect and grab first. So, Nora, why can't you be like every other game character and just slide down the rope, burning your hands in the process? You've already got chlamydia and stuff on them, so you should be fine. Anyway, so once here, there are three holes that we need to be looking in, and they are for each sort of individual um, um, notes in your journal. And the ones we need to be looking at, it's basically got like black gunk or something coming out of the holes. So the first one, as you can see, is sort of on the back. They're the only ones that we need to be looking through and finding, the ones with all the black ugly coming out of it. So take a little look around... Uh, they're fairly obvious. There is literally only three of them which have this sort of black gun coming out of it, so you can't miss one or anything. Ah, uh, I hear whispering. And I hate it when that happens. I thought I unlocked an achievement, and it's my controller battery's low. And before I get trolled, yes, I still haven't bought a battery pack for the new Xbox controller, okay? <laughs> so, I'm not a poor man, I swear. But we should now have 25% of the story logs. If you've been following along with the videos so far, you should have that achievement right now as well. These are the new type of collectibles. We'll be collecting a lot of these throughout the game as well. The murals, they are called... And, again, each has a sort of individual story, and it all ties up nicely, but make sure to click on each mural to get the two of them, and the couple of pieces of paper here on the bench as well. So that should be two murals, and one or two notes as well. And then once you're done, we can just move on. Again, like I said, you know, if you do get a bit paranoid and you think, oh, just in case it doesn't collect, you can more than... More than welcome to click on it two or three times to definitely make sure. So click on the lever. That was nice and easy for us for once. Thank you to everyone for not making that difficult. And then climb up the ladder very, very, very slowly. So before we go to the right, we're going down to the left, we're going back down the hill and basically going to the elevator from earlier on. What there's going to be is the publisher's Raw Fury sign-on. The elevator will interact with that, 
look at it for a few seconds and that'll unlock an achievement. By the way, if I've got one gripe about this game, is Nora climbing and going down ladders. It genuinely feels like a chore. Like, you make, it made me go bolder on top. Okay, maybe it's just me going bold anyway, but still. Happy days then, so you should now get that achievement. And now basically we're just going to head right back up the hill, <laughs> the way we came. So what we are going to do now is a slightly more complicated puzzle than what we've seen so far. So head to the back of the hut where the telescope is, and on the desk we can now interact with a box. Now that this will open up some kind of contraption, and as we press Y to take a look at the notes, we can see that we need to get the uh, same black spots in the exact same place and the exact same size. Again, on your own this could be a little bit difficult, but all I can say is Pay attention to where I put the two dials at the bottom there, and importantly, how many times I hit the plus button on the right to increase its size. So we need to get exactly the way that is looking right now on the projector screen in front of us. So you've got the two dials there from one to five, and then again, note how many times I hit the plus button on the right hand side. If it's too quick, just pause the video after everyone, and it should be good. But hopefully, this helps. Well, that's top solving, Detective. Congratulations on easily solving that by this guide. Oh, yeah. So now we can actually pick it up. Now it's important, obviously, we get that because now we can go to the telescope and we can place it in. Again, remember, you should have had the uh, collectible journal log from doing this without the lens in earlier on. But we can look through the telescope and a constellation appears. And now Nora's are like... Ew, what on earth is happening? I don't know. I'm, I'm too posh usually. My god, what? But we are now basically coming up what to the end of the chapter. We've just got the big puzzle in the um, stony hole in the floor to solve. So that's where we're heading now. So we're going to head down the ladder. Again, she's slow, so, you know, take a nap. Have a, have a cup of tea. Touch yourself for two minutes. I don't know. I don't care. Whatever you do is up to you, but <laughs> she takes her time climbing down. Right, oh then, so the constellation that we've seen earlier, that should now be in our notepad and it's basically the pattern that we have to follow on the bottom right of the book there. That is what we have to do, but it can be quite potentially tricky to really see or understand what you're doing. So the first one is from where we're standing, it's directly the one on the left. Follow it around, just sort of to the right, and then go straight to the next one. And then to the right, that is where the next one is, hit the one on the left and then straight around on the outside circle there to hit the next one. Turn around and follow it down, and then go up, and then that should be that. So again, apologies if the explaining wasn't fantastic, but <laughs> that's the best way to do it instead of trying to figure it out and solve it. So now we're basically going to drown full of oil. Game over. Nice. No, no. What's happening? What's happening? I, I'm feeling
But of course it's not really game over because that would suck and I think a lot of people would be pissed off if it was two chapters and we just die through oil drownage. But we're not, we have now started chapter 3, this part is all automatic so you can just take in the scenery and the lovely blue water as you as Nora losing your mind with those chlamydia hand of yours. My legs aren't responding. Holy Moses, what... what is that creature on the horizon? Wait a moment, I... no, no, no! Ah! I... I can breathe. So thankfully we're not jumping to our death, but we are jumping into a big old pool. It's the first tiniest swimming section, there's a couple we got to do through the game. It's just the same as sprinting, um, so just press the right trigger or click in the left stick to go faster. And we're going to see some, I mean imagine them, imagine them eyes staring at you. And people have it, people have those stalking problems. Not me of course, because I'm not good looking enough for that, which is fine by me. <laughs> Right then, so chapter 3 has now officially started, so we're going to start heading to the right and we're going to get another journal entry very quickly, as soon as we can start sprinting. Just head on past this boat. Come on honey, you've, you've only broken your legs, it's fine, you can still sprint, it's video games. Sprint past this one and on the left you can see another wreckage on the boat. There it is, a little bit of wreckage. Just simply walk up to the water. Uh, Nora will say a bit of dialogue, and that will count as a journal entry. I'd, I'd always been afraid of storms, but something... Ah, once we're done here, we're going to keep on heading to the right. We're going actually inside the massive boat wreck. Absolute legendary Titanic style. You can probably see Leonardo DiCaprio's frozen head somewhere. Kate, not Kate Winslet's though, because that bitch is fine. She's warm and toasty because apparently there wasn't enough room on the uh, driftwood, but hey, it's just a film, no need to get pissed off by it. Anyway, do the, sl the slow climb up the ladder. Slow, there she goes, look, there she is. So now we're up, we're going to head to the left, have a look at the right, but there's literally nowhere to go, so we're heading left. Head to the left again immediately, and there's four levers that we need to pull, and we need to pull them in a particular order. So say if uh, the first one is on the left to the fourth one on the right, so we're going to pull the third one first, then the second one, then the fourth one, and then the first one. So hopefully that made a bit of sense and that was made easier for you, and uh, make sure to pull this lever, and that should be fine, and then there's going to be another box that straight ahead of us, as you can see the red blinking light, so make sure to pull that one as well. So there's quite a few of these boxes that we need to pull, and we've got to do it in the order. So now head down, we're going to head to the left, we're coming up to another small, easy floating stones puzzle now, with this box. So you see the dials at the bottom there? Now the best thing to do, switch it on, go to the first dial on the left, um, click it all the way down to zero, so you can't click it anymore, and then just click it up four clicks. So one, two, three, four. So make sure it's on zero, and then just click it up four times. Do the same with the second one. Put it all the way back down to zero, then click it up four times. And then when you start hitting this one to the left, it should work then. And you should get 262, 349, 415 coming up. So that also counts as another journal entry as well. So now we can just head on back down the ladder. Oh. 
And hold your horses there, Nelly. Before we head on back out in the freezing cold rain, go around this big old pipe on the right-hand side, and there's a bunch of boxes on the right. And just in between, some of these boxes kind of dark, so it's kind of hard to see unless you turn your brightness way up. Just press, uh, interact with this audio tape here. You'll have to wait until it finishes, but that will unlock a missable achievement for us. So make sure to just stay here until it finishes. I'm really unsure of why there was a cow on there, to be honest. Um, unless that was, like, something moving someone. So, <laughs> that, that achievement's a lot. We're going to head outside now, interact with that switch, and that will give us some light. So, we should be good with this bit now. Now we can finally move on and have a look in some of the tents for some of these collectibles. And also the third secret objective. So, first things first, have a look on the tent on the right-hand side as we enter... And we're going to go to the right, and there's three hanging pictures, so we're going to interact with these ones first. Hmm, torture. Lovely. Man, this island. Definitely do not look human. This picture is taken from a distance. What is he doing? But that should be it for this tent, so make sure you've interacted with all three of those photos. And then we can just head directly in front of us, so past the fire pit. And in this little box right here, there is a can of sardines. This is the third secret objective and another missable achievement. And then just to the right of that, we can pull the next switch. And that is going to um, get the projector projection projection screen up and running so we're gonna go back on ourselves and then go right uh, we've got a bit of walking to do now actually so we're gonna have to go up and then come back down so there's a little tent on the left it's got some interactable objects in there we'll come back to that though but head up right for the time being This ornate structure certainly isn't natural, but not man-made either. And this part again is like the main sort of puzzle that we need to do to finish the chapter, but we're not, we're nowhere near there yet. So head to the right and we're going to go down these bunch of stairs now. Now this is important. Um, we can't come here yet because we actually have to interact with these four symbols and as Nora just said, thank you, new. These symbols seem to um, tell us the sea level or the tide level, whatever. But we needed to do that be, uh, to interact with the projection screen. So we have to do that, and now we're just heading all the way back down to the main area. <laughs> so that's not annoying, right? Not like we're trying to find a missing husband. No, we'll just walk with our leprosy chlamydia hands and, yeah, thanks. I'm quite scared of storms. When I was a child, I used to cover myself with the sheets to not listen to the noise of thunder. I honestly doubt Right then, so before we head to the left, go into the main area, we're going to have a look now at the sort of... Well, it's all abandoned, but this little area right in front of us. So, the first thing we need to do then, the desk, this desk on the left-hand side, take a look at this piece of paper. You can have a look in the box if you want, but there's nothing in there of any importance to us. Go over to the other desk, have a look at this second piece of paper, and there is a third bit of paper to the right. We can't pick it up, but we can view it. And then that should be that for this tiny little area. So now we can finally head back, and we are heading to the projection screen offs. So we're going to head past the sardine and pickle box or whatever, take a look and then we're immediately going to go to the right and up these stairs just before we go into the projection screen there is a mural that we need to interact with up here so climb the uh, stairs I tell you what 
I mean, it's a lot of walking, like. I, I didn't sign up for all this walking, but... Hey, the, the stuff again you do for achievements, innit? So there's only one, <laughs> there is only one path up. There's the mural. Make sure to interact with that. And then we should be golden nuggets to head back down. And then to the right into the old projection screen house. And now, this is why it was important for us to go and actually look at the sea level first and the high tide. And this is another important part. This entry will be a, gile, uh, a journal entry, but you actually have to interact with the screen. So when Nora says, uh, oh, I think this is the right one, we actually have to interact with the screen for the journal entry to count. So click the screen on and have a look at the right switch. Press the right switch and then when she says this is the right one this one actually you have to actually interact with the screen to get the journal entry again i missed it and i had to come back through and replay it again which is a pain in the ass to find but we're not quite done just keep clicking keep mashing the a button on that until we get to a little <laughs> a couple of little drawings like this and this unlocks the not another boring slideshow achievement. So make sure to go all the way to the end to get that one. Have a look at the floor underneath you to get this. Another journal entry, another letter. So yeah, few things all happening <laughs> all at once really there. So yeah, so make sure that you interacted with the screen and you went all the way to the end on the projection screen. So n right next to that screen, we're gonna have a look at these two pieces of paper. And then what we're going to do is have a look at the calendar as well for another journal entry, which is on the wall to the left of us. Now, I do have a look at this floating stone. Again, it, it's always worth just looking at everything, uh, but it doesn't, that particular stone doesn't count as a journal entry, but this calendar does. Knowing the lunar cycles is useful for better navigation at night. So, Harry... So head to the other side and you can see like a little mini piano. First of all, head to the box to the right of that piano and it's basically telling us, again, this is another puzzle that we need to do. It's telling us the order um, which we need to press the piano keys. But of course, you know, it, it takes a little bit of time to figure it out. But what is just going to be easier is if you just follow me. So be be careful, take your time, follow what I do, you shouldn't have any problems. As soon as you play the keys, you'll get the number 440, and then you'll automatically back it out. And the achievement should, there it is, eventually unlock. That's why I was just staying there for a second, because that annoyed the crap out of me. I thought it wasn't going to unlock. But now we are finally good to go. So now we're going to head all the way, done with this area now, but we're going to head all the way back, take another long leprosy kind of walk, all the way back up to where the last sort of main puzzle is. It's the organ. It's what it's called. But that's where we're heading. When I get back home, I'm going to read up on engineering. I've been interested in knowing how things work since I was a child, but I always thought technology wasn't for me. What nonsense. I've got to stop saying leprosy as well. Sorry. Sorry for anyone I offend with the word leprosy. Apologies. <laughs> so what we need to do now is find like these buttons on a wall, these switches. So this one, for instance, we need this one pointing up. And there's about five or six of them. So if we go to the left, you can see the next one on the wall. So we're going to interact with this one as well. And let that one go up. 
There it is. Head to the right just a little bit, and we're going to see the next one. We're going to put this one down. So we interact with that just once. And then we're going to head just behind us. There is a bunch of stairs here, and there is one on the wall here. So we interact with this one to get this one down. Then when, once we're up the top of the stairs, head to the other side where the other staircase is. Ignore this first one. We've already done that. It is the one on the left-hand side right next to the stairs. Interact with that one. So that one is down. And now we're going to go back down the stairs. And there is one to the left of us here. Interact with that one. So that is up. And that should be all of that bit done. So now we're going to head to the middle. There's like a little switch just in the middle where the big hole is right there. So what we need to do, press the button once. And it's going to slowly shut it, and then press it again until it is fully shut. And then what that should do then is uh, pop up like a little switchboard behind us. There it is, so we can interact with this. And now you've got to make sure that yours looks exactly the same as mine. If it looks like this, then we are able to press the button, and the organ will appear, allowing us to move on. Complicated stuff, huh? So yeah, if you thought this was just a normal game where we're going to try and find our husband, no, no, it's it's you generally losing your absolute mind because somehow we man Harry and all that manages to get organs slamming out of the sky and all types of crap. Anyway, take a look at this box on the left before we continue. This is Harry's letter, and this is another journal entry. My dear old pal. <laughs> dear old pal. Good. Understanding what is happening to you. But it is taking a toll on my sanity. As fascinating as this island and its ancient and unfathomable wonders may seem, it's also a place plagued with misfortune and calamities. We lost Roy at the campsite. We almost lost our engineer on this beach. The doctor went mad and stabbed him with a strange knife. And all because of this island, Nora. Initially, we were optimistic and in high spirits, but now we've all become resentful and discouraged. Even I can feel how I am constantly assaulted by dark thoughts. Anyway, if what I am going through here helps me find you a cure, it'll have been worth it. I hope to find an answer in the temple on that mountain peak. Love you always, Harry. My poor Harry. He is worried. Right, oh then, so to end the chapter, just press all four buttons from left to right. One, two, three, four. And, uh, <laughs> well, enjoy whatever the hell's going on right now. So again, I just have a little look through all the notes, all the logs, just make sure you get the same ones I got, including, remember, to interact with the projection screen. As long as you got that one, that was the only one I was missing, to be honest, so I managed to get that. But now we can just head through the door. Job is nice!
that was quite a hike. So then, here we are, chapter four out of six. We're already flying, and, you know, Nora's legs must be knackered by now. It's making me knackered watching her walk, but, again, I'm just a fat old lazy shitbag. So, there's only <laughs> one path to go for now. By the way, I think we're going to be collecting about 14 to 15 different murals in this particular chapter so we're going to head right there's a little um fork so we can go right rather than straight up and left and as you can see already there is one mural already to look at and and it's like robots dancing or something i don't know you you can make up any kind of thing as long as you've got a good imagination yeah so we're going to head back now to the sort of way we came and then continue heading up the path. These areas are not massive areas, so you shouldn't really get too lost either. Keep heading up, keep heading up. This is the radio tower that we need. And we should already now have the 50% of the story logs. So if you've been following the video, you should have the, that achievement unlocked for you right now as well. But if not, again, just go chat to select and then take a look and see what you're missing. So go in this little hut here, get this little radio tower frequency picture. And um, we're going to have a look. There is a photo on the right, which is of the utmost importance, a uh, picture of the crew. Um, I believe it is only those two that actually count. But I'm going to take a look at the rest of the pictures uh, anyway, the pictures and the pieces of paper. Again, just to be on the safe side. Nakal? And then once we're done inside this hut, go to the left and we're going to see another unfortunate tombstone. The grave of Frank Grimes. Oh, wait, sorry, that's the Simpsons. Ignore me. But Frank has died, sadly, again. So have a look at the war tags and have a look at the photograph on said grave. We can't actually interact with the tombstone on this uh, this time, so don't worry about it. Who's got a shovel and shoveling massive boulders like that on it? This. Fair play, Harry, if that's you, pal. You've got some strength of ten bears, boy. So I head up the stairs. Just to the left, we're going to see mural number two for this part. So Nora doesn't actually say anything, so that bit's fine. And then we're going to head to the left. And we're going to see another mural just on this big, tall sort of pillar thing right here. So there we go. And then if we continue forward, there's going to be a third mural on this massive pillar. So let's interact, interact. And then from this point, god damn it, no achievements. I'm sorry that I still haven't got a battery pack, okay? It's Christmas, damn it, ruining me. Anyway, <laughs> head down the stairs from where we just were to the other side, to the sort of left it was, and there is a there is a a pushed over pillar. But we still need to interact with this mural anyway. So that should be four murals. Five overall for the chapter already. So obviously make sure that you've just got the same as me there. So now we're going to head back up. We're basically now going to get the missable achievement. Like I said, there's roughly about around one missable achievement in each chapter. Uh, not including the secret objectives. So head to the middle. Where the microphone is, we're going to go past the microphone. Underneath these wooden planks... We need to interact with these four the diamond-shaped shapes. Yeah, diamond-shaped shapes. So we interact with that. That's another journal entry. And then just to the right of the microphone, we're going to be picking up a piece of scramble paper. Again, that is another journal entry. So make sure to pick that one up. And then what we're going to do is actually keep mashing the A button next to the microphone. Nora's going to say one thing. And then she's going to say something else. So just keep mashing the A button until she says her second thing. And that will unlock the achievement for talking into the microphone without it actually working. Which... <laughs> yeah, I sing exactly the same. I'm hideous. If anyone's heard me, I am disgusting. And I apologize for anyone's ears I offended. So, head back to the first mural on the pillar. Now, you can see just underneath the mural, there's uh, four diamonds that we need to press. So, if you press the Y button, again, you can work it out if you want. I'm not going to explain it. All I'm going to say is pick the top diamond uh, for the first pillar. So, move over to the second one. 
and this time it is going to be the right hand side diamond that we need to push in so make sure it is the right hand side one head over to the third pillar and then this time it's going to be the bottom diamond that we're going to be pushing you know i could explain absolutely everything but you know this is a guide we just want to get through it as quickly as you can while enjoying it so I'm just going to tell you what to do. So push, make sure it's the third one. So it's the top one for the first one, right one for the second one, bottom one for the third one. And then as we come here, it is the left one. But of course, remember, it's pushed over. So from where you're looking at, it will be the top one from where you're looking at. So technically, it's the left. But from where we're looking at, it's the one that is up. So make sure to do that. And then this little cutscene will happen. And now what we can do, there is a generator that has basically just opened up for us. The hatches have opened, revealing a generator, I should say. So we're just going to head down this path and then down the stairs to the right. That is where the generator is. Right then, so again, it's a very simple puzzle this time, luckily, so we need to go behind the generator. Uh, what we're going to do, just for simple sake, we're going from left to right. So you see the sort of three holes here, we need to push the green button on top, and have a look at the one on the left, and make sure that one is on the bottom. So you need the one hole to be on the bottom, and then we need to go around, press the lever so that it locks in. It really is as easy as that, but obviously we can't do it all at once. So again, say if you go from left to right, which when you come here, it'll be right to left, not to confuse you. <laughs> so go back around. Now, now you should see on the left-hand side one, that one is locked in. Happy days. So for the middle one, get the hole down the bottom, do the same thing, and then do the same with the right one. So once that bit's on then, interact with this sort of green little pedestal right here. Now, make sure to click these in order. So the sort of bottom right-hand side one, and then the middle of the two, pur of the three purple ones there. If you click those two, that just makes life a whole lot easier. If you end up having them, if you end up not doing that, it can still be done, but you just have to press a lot more buttons until you get the combination right. So it's just easier to do it as i done it there. But with that all set up now, when the both levers are pushed down, now we can go and beautifully sing. N not, 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 not my style, mind. Obviously, have a look in the hut first, though. We are going to push this lever and switch on the radio broadcasting tower. So before we go and sing, actually, we're going to be heading up. So do the slow climb, baby. The slow climb. Then just press the lever here, and then press the button once, and we're going to be knocked the fudge out soon. Come on. Well, isn't that a lucky mucker getting half electrocuted to death, or half electrocuted in this sort of dreamlike sequence? Never a good thing, that must have pinched a bit, like. So this bit is particularly easy, but what we're going to do while we are in this dreamlike sequence, press the Y button to whap your... <laughs> journal out, you thought I was going to say something doily. <laughs> but no, press Y, get your journal out, and that will unlock the Nora Comic-Con. Nora, Nora Comic-Con. Anyway... I'm dull, sorry, can't read apparently either. But that will unlock that achievement, so make sure to get that now. And then all, all this is, is basically we're just walking forward, interacting with a few things until we see our house in the distance. So nothing really going on here, apart from being a bit thirsty. Give me a beer, would you? No. I would rather die than use that damned thing again. Oh, <laughs> 
try. I need to find water. My bed. How many times did I think I was going to die lying in this bed? I'd better find some shade before I dry right up. The horseshoe-shaped pillar and that diamond shape again. I can't take much more of this. I feel woozy. Is that... a house? That's not a house. That's our house in Englewood. Am I dreaming? Or am I just losing my mind? So, for a posh English adventurer, this is certainly a posh old house. So you've got to interact and go through. We're going to head straight up the stairs now. All the way straight until we get to the back room. And this is where the secret objective is for the chapter, actually. So, go past all these tables and desks right here and look at the sort of photo. Greetings from... Um... Yahad... Yahantli. Apologies if I butchered that. Probably did, but it's all good. So look at that, and then the thing to end this dream sequence is have a look at the music box in the chair. And that's this particular sequence over. What I've been thinking, though, is, I mean, surely there's got to be a cure for it somewhere. You didn't have to go to some desert island which fudges your mind up to find it. I mean, <laughs> some pretty good doctors about, like, just saying. Then again, we wouldn't have got the thousand out of a thousand, and this game would have been a lot less entertaining, I expect. Ah, uh, what, what was that? Another vivid dream? And my music box again, but... So after Nora has another little chat with herself, turned turn to the right we're going back up the stairs we're basically turning on the power and now we are going to sing beautifully see told you i just deafen you apologies mm, see nora's already on it look i'm in her way through life so there you go you see the lever we need to push the lever the box is blinking so that's on then we need to interact with the microphone and watch in amazement as it all kicks off again Let's give it a shot. Wow, I just had no idea what's happening, but I liked it. Really got to tell this get this game genuinely is fantastic for small things like that, and it makes the game immersive and beautiful. But we are coming up to another bunch of murals now. So I think there's five in this little tunnel that we need to take a look at. So there's the first one straight in front of you. They're all basically in a row. You really cannot miss them. And if you do, apologies, you might be blind. Go to the doctors. Get that checked out. So this is the second one. Third one is there. Look at those spots. They look like mine. And there's the final two. So you got this one and then the one with the fish. So that would be the last mural for this bit. Fish of every size and shape. Goodbye, little fishies. 
Anyway, head up and on this box we're going to see another two pieces of paper we are going to interact with. In the campsite. Nice, they look pretty delicious to me. Unless you don't like fish, then they probably don't look delicious. On the left box there is another piece of paper we're going to take a look at. And that should be all, so now we can actually head up the elevator to... There are two puzzles left. The l very last one is very easy, more or less. It's like a Simon Says sort of thing. And this one, to explain, it can be quite complicated. But to do the actual puzzle itself, if you're following me, it's going to be very easy. But if you're having to figure this out on your own, yeah, it could have been quite difficult. But what we're going to do first, then, is look at all four of the murals to get them in our journals. So that's another four. Should be the last four that we need to collect in this chapter. So have a look. Uh, Nora's not going to say anything. She's just merely going to observe. And then there's going to be this little sort of ca this little bit of camp right by the side of it. So the first thing we're going to do is have a look uh, on the box. And there's going to be this sort of piece of paper evolution box. So uh, be sure to grab that. And then actually on the bed there's going to be another letter from old Ari. My dear old pal, Nora, I wish I could write something else, but a long time ago I promised you I would never lie to you. So here goes. There is no cure for your illness. What you carry in your blood is changing you, and it will keep changing you until it's done, whatever that means. There is nothing we can do to stop it. My dear old pal, my partner, the love of my life. I am so sorry. I've made so many mistakes. All those deaths because of me. Frank, DeWitt, Roy. All for nothing. Maybe Te Haro is right. Maybe we can return to the beach and build a raft to get back to Papiete. Maybe in less than a month, I could be back. There's no cure? Basically, this is Harry Potter when he grows up. So the next bunch of films, we're going to see Harry all grown up as an English adventurer who goes off the rails. Or Therm, on his way back to Hogwarts. Anyway, on the next table to the right of where Harry's letter was, there's about five letters that we are going to be taking a look at and pieces of paper. Again, not, I don't think they're all necessary, but just to be on the safe side, better to be safe than sorry. Just have a look at all five. So they've got two pieces of paper, the two pieces of paper there, the two books either side, which makes four on this table, and the letter on the left. So just make sure that you've interacted with all five things before we head off. And we're going to the right, basically back to the first mural here. There's going, to, there is going to be a piece of paper which goes in our journal on this box just underneath it. The liquid. He thinks it's water. What he actually means is, where do I get more vodka from? Because, man, this island is pissing me off. Now, where we're going next is just to the second mural. As we see, I'll have a look on the left now. As you can see, there is a one of the symbols with white marker around it with water animal. So, click on that. Where, where I have just done that also goes towards it as well. Go to the main door and have a look at this wine stain right here. On about water, he's on about wine. Have a look at the broken bottle as well underneath it. This is important, a lot of people do seem to miss this one. So make sure to have a look at the stain on the door and the bottle underneath it. And then have a look at the numbers on the door there. So make sure at this main door you are collecting and interacting with three things before you leave. A lot of people do miss the bottle on the floor. So go over to the third mural, there is another piece of paper. Life alive? I do not know. But that's something else that we're going to need as well. And I'm pretty sure now that that is that. Yes, so that's all for collecting. So basically, again, I'm not going to explain it. There is a guy, I apologize, I cannot remember his name, but he's done a, an incredibly fantastic detailed guide on how this particular puzzle all works out. I'm not going to explain anything. I'm just going to show you what to do. So this first mural, we're going to leave that one alone. That is in the correct position already. So we're going to head straight to the second mural now. And you see the diamond shape on top? We need to interact with the button and we need to do that once when the diamond is facing to the right side. That's it. So now go to the third mural and now we're going to interact with this button twice so that the diamond is facing down 
and then leave it, then we're good. Head over to the fourth mural and do the same thing. So interact with the button twice until it's pointing down, and that is how you get past. That is that. So the first mural, the uh, diamond arrow points up. The second one points to the right, as you can see. The third and the fourth one both point down. Again, the explanation is incredible, and I do apologize. I cannot remember his name, but, but there are YouTube detailed guides out there with incredible explanations about how that is actually done. So go check them out. So have a look at this piece of paper then before we do this last drum puzzle. And what I've done for this drum puzzle, it's basically like a Simon Says. So you'll have the big walls in front of you make a noise. Then what we need to do is basically figure out which pad makes which noise and just copy the exact same. But to make things incredibly easy for you, as I like doing for you guys and gals, I've literally just put, it should be the exact same every time for absolutely everyone. But as you can see, I have put the answer on the top of the screen so you don't have to be worrying. So for this one, obviously you go left and then you go to the right. And then it does the next pattern, and as you can see, middle, right, left. So we got about six of these to do, and then we are good to go, baby! It's the end of the chapter! So, we're about an hour and 20 in, we now have only two chapters left to go, and this one is quite more uh, heavily focused on the swimming around as a weird fish-faced alien, weird mermaid thing, which is all good with me, anything to get a kick out of life. But, yeah, so that would be that, so, uh, so uh, this bit's particularly easy anyway, all we're doing is looking for the same portal that we just ended chapter 4 in. Look, I say portal, it looks like a portal, and you've got to stick your hand on. That's basically just in front of us, to the left a little bit. And, um, yeah, in terms of the drums just at the end of Chapter 4 there, the first couple of bits would have been easy, but it always gets me when you need about five or six, because that makes me lose my mind. And, quite frankly, it's it, it's easy to lose my mind, because I am not quite with, there with the intelligence, you know? <laughs> it's a sad situation. Anyway... Go to the right here and we can see this next pole. We're going to end up in the water again. And there's basically going to be a, a tiny small puzzle. So if you look directly below us from where we start, it's it's kind of, it's, it's a very easy puzzle. But this is what we're looking at. So what you need to do then is go to the right side button, press the A button, and green liquid will start spewing. As soon as it reaches the gold inside plate, then hit the other one. And then they should combine at the same time, getting the arrow and get... Um, unlocking it for us so then we'll be able to nip on down so again very easy it may you know it might take you once or twice to sort of get used to it but that's all it is until the very end of this chapter where you've got to do sort of four at the same um four of the buttons at the same time but again that's easy with a bit of practice so just enjoy once again the beautiful sights that's one thing it's a recurring theme in this game everything's just bloody beautiful in this game looks fantastic so once here, we're going to head up past all the seaweed and all the ugly. 
and then there's going to be another portal just underneath the top of the water. So with that, that is going to help us get our get rid of our fish-faced, ugly mermaid sexualness. Oh, it's not sexual, is it? You, you know what I mean. Sorry, ignore me. We're carrying on. We're going down now. And what we're going to do straight away is have a look to the left, and you can see this pillar. Very important, push this pillar so that the button goes down. And then directly in front of us, there's going to be a little pool, and we're going to interact with that. Now, these actually come as an achievement, so we need to find and interact with five, uh, seven of these pools. Sorry. So five are on this part of land right here, and two will be underwater later on. So head into the left sort of tent now, and then interact with the second uh, sticky black mucky stuff. You don't have to stick your head in, that's fine. And then head to the left again, and we're going to see two sort of broken murals just on the wall here. They still do count as journal entries, so make sure to have a look at both of these. Well, thanks for vandalizing, you stupid butthole. Anyway, now from there, head to the left, down the dark tunnel. And this is another sort of journal entry which people do actually miss. So we're going to see two pillars, as you can see, with symbols on them, hands, etc. There are five that you need to hit. So one, so it'll be four on this pillar, and then one on the other pillar, which we can't actually walk to, but we can see. So make sure you've got four icons that you've hit on this pillar and then the one right there across the way and then that should be that then but that is very important and that is one that people can actually miss so you've got to hit you've got to interact with five um, of the eye icons before we leave so just very important just to do that so we're going to head up back now Once we get here, just turn, basically do a 360, and we can see a bunch of rocks going up as well. So that is literally from where we just exited the tunnel right there. And there is going to be the third um, black yum yum creamy goodness that we've got to take a look in. And then once that vision is done, we're going to head directly to the left now, head up these rocks, and it'll be the fourth Butters Creamy Goodness that we're going to take a look in. And for any South Park fans, Butters Creamy Goodness, you will get that reference. And through what was written in that inscription. So once that vision is done, make sure to press the button on this pillar right here. Until that goes down, make sure that goes down and then we're good. Then we're going to head back down here. And as you can see, just in the distance, there is another button on a pillar that we need to push. So again, obviously, push it. Ah, once we're at the bottom here, we're going to dive, we're going to go past this first tent, don't need to go in here, but this second tent on the right hand side, we've got another button on a pillar that we are going to push, so once again, push it louder, and then we're just going to go straight on and head up these rocks for the fifth butter's creamy goodness yum yum black stuff, to, to get another vision, sorry, yeah. So with that vision complete, directly in front of us is another button that we can push and what this is going to do is these pillars should now start going down. If they do not start going down, it basically means that you've missed a button on a pillar that you've forgotten to push. That's what happened to me the first time. I, I didn't have a bloody clue what was happening but it turns out that I missed, I didn't push one of these buttons, in fact it was that one that we just went past there. So if that does happen. Just go around, make sure you've pushed all the buttons on the pillars, and then you are okay. Also, another reason we've done the button pushing on the pillars in that particular order is that you had to do it in that particular order, otherwise it wouldn't work. So, heading past the murals now, we're heading down again, and with everything that we've done, there should be now another button that we can push, getting rid of some of the water. And here it is. 
So we'll give that a little pushity push push. And now we can actually cross to the portal on the other side. And this is where one of the longer swimming sections takes over now. So I'll try... I will try to do my best to explain sort of where we're going. It's a small... Whew, sorry. It is a small area, but it can be quite confusing potentially sometimes. So as we start then, we're going to go directly below us. We're going to do another one of those green gooey puzzles from earlier on. So interact with it. Press the bottom button first. We need that switched up. We need the arrow at the bottom there pointing up. So interact with that one first. And it's exactly the same as the last one. So go to the right, push that, go to the left. Wait until it hits the gold inner circle and then push the left button and that should hit at the same time. So that's good. And we only need to do two of these because uh, basically when we're finished exploring and everything we need to be shooting <laughs> through all of the open um, vents, if you want to call them that. I'll just call them that anyway. So head down straight a little bit and we'll just do another one of these puzzles. <laughs> Beautiful but dangerous. That's me, baby. Well, well maybe not. Well, maybe ha No, not at all. No. It's a shame. So, once we have done this puzzle anyway, we're going to head to the left. And as you can see, there is a big, obvious-looking mural. So what we're going to get in this area are two murals, the final two visions in the Butter's Creamy Black Stuff Yum Yums, and also a secret objective as well. So, like I said, take a look at this mural first. And then to the left, slightly, very slightly to the left again, you're going to see these two statues. Interact with them. I don't think they're needed for the journal, but do it anyway again, just to be on the safe side. But what we're going to do is swim past them now. And then, roughly around on the left-hand side, just below us, there is going to be the tiara, which is a secret objective. I think it's just past... Here it is, look, yeah. So it's by this sort of orange-looking bush, if you need a reference. But that is the fifth secret objective. And we're going to stick to this right-hand wall now, because there are... It's very dark, but as you can see, there are two of these um, tent-looking things that there were on top. And this is where we're going to get the... Next couple of visions. The sunken continent. So just head directly immediately to your left and you'll see just the next tent. Have a look in there. Creamy goodness, delicious achievement unlocks. So these creatures are immortal? Nakal vision. Don't I have a cool voice for it? Cute. Anyway, from there, we're going to go literally directly straight in front of us. We're going to interact with the final thing in this area, which again is this big, obvious looking mural. And then what we're going to do is basically head back up to the starting point and we're going to go vent swimming, which is a nice automatic thing. And you once again can enjoy the stunningness that is the awesome scenery in this game man i love it i do love it so yep so head all the way back up again it's pretty obvious where the big first vent is and there's a button we're going to interact with and that we can enjoy has kept me from being happy. What I feel now is the complete opposite of being sick. I feel full of life and energy. Now, as we get to the top of the water, there is a portal that we can actually interact with. But for some reason, I'm trying to do it the stupid way, which, as a weird fish mermaid woman, it doesn't... You can't get out, because, you know, you'll die and stuff, probably. 
Here's the portal, interact with that, and we are back on the land. We are the other side, as you can see. Literally, I'm not sure why she couldn't have just sort of, you know, jumped in the water and climbed up the other side, but hey, whatever. I'm not the expert at adventuring, and I don't have that cool posh English accent. But push the button, and the water level, once again, will diminish. So now we can access the tunnel, which we couldn't before. So again, there's only, you go behind you, there's only one path to go down. It's that tunnel. These creatures lived like slaves. All their lives imprisoned and tortured in this place. Was it possible to live a decent life in here? If you've lived all your life in a prison, how would you know that you are a prisoner? Now I can enter this tunnel. So there's nothing really much to do in the way of swimming here. All we need to do, we need to look directly below us and start heading down. Turn yourself around like so. So we know where the hell we're going. All we're doing is literally one of those easy puzzles that we need to do. Open up the vent, and then again, we're enjoying the scannery. Ride, but it's over now. So this is the final area then of chapter five before we get onto chapter six. And the first thing we're going to do then, well, apparently I'm going to have a look at a bunch of rocks, which are not needed. But on our left, after this little tiny, tiny automatic cutscene happens. We are going to find the final mural in this place, so grab that one, and then what we're going to do is head up to the stairs, and we're going to find, oh wait, sorry, that was the penultimate mural, we're going to find the final mural at the top of these stairs, my apologies, so make sure to grab these two murals before you head on, and then what we're going to do is go to the staircase directly in front of us and climb up a ladder, a few things here to collect as well. And the first thing we're going to do is head to the left is going to be the fifth of Harry Potter's legendary Hogwarts letters. Oh or his grown-up Hogwarts letters, sorry. Yeah. In this box is where it is. My dear old pal, it's only Cass and me now. I have much to thank her for, even if our friendship is worn thin due to hunger and fatigue. If she hadn't insisted so much, 
we'd never have convinced Teharoa. He guided us as we followed the river down from the mountain peak. And that's how we found this entrance. And the mural. Maybe I can't undo what's happening to you, Nora, but I think I can try to become like you. The original inhabitants of this island took slaves to a sanctuary, and there they performed a ritual. Teaharoa said the ritual was madness, and he didn't want any part of it. He and Cass argued violently. When we woke up the next morning, he had left. I know it sounds strange, but you have to trust me, my love. I know this is going to work, and we can be together. You understand what that means, don't you, Nora? I have... We have a second chance. So when this letter finishes, don't interact with it again, because you'll have to just go through that, another let that same letter for another minute or two. So try not to interact with it when it's done, by accident, as I done. Now on this board, sort of at the back of the wall, we're going to find another piece of paper and also something to the right of it as well. So take a look at the symbols and then take a look at the map next to that. And there's nothing on this area, but on this bench just below it, there is another two pieces of paper we are going to take a look at. And there is going to be another one to the right on another bench. So make sure to, I think that this is the one for the journal. The other two I don't think you needed. But again, always better to be safe than sorry, because you don't want to go through a whole chapter and accidentally miss it. Have a look at this piece of paper again by the sort of fireplace pot, and then that is good for this area. Now what we got to do is the final puzzle. And it is, like I said, the same as the green puzzles that we were doing underwater, only now there is four of them. So we're going to slowly head down. And fair play, you're... You know, your leprosy hands are still intact. I will give you that, Nora. Fantastic, mate. So, as I said, there is four of them. We just have to do it in a particular order. We're going from the top, sort of, to the right and around. If I can actually get down the bloody stairs. There we go. So, as you can see, I will tell you when to hit the next button. So, hit the top one first. As soon as you do that, go to the right-hand side diamond and now hit that next button go down to the bottom one now hit the next button and then as soon as the top one gets into the inner golden circle now hit it and then that should align all four up um, basically enabling us to get the boat and move on to chapter six so again hopefully that was explained a little bit better than i originally had in my head if not i apologize it may take a couple of attempts it took me f about four or five attempts and, but don't get too frustrated and don't break your control. They're bloody expensive these days. So take a look at your log. Make sure you've got everything that I have um, in terms of getting the 100%. And then get on the boat and get your ass out of here, baby! We're on to the last chapter. So then this is the longest chapter of the lot, of course it is, and just for the first two minutes it'll be sailing on this boat, again she's having a little chat with herself, if she hasn't gone mental by now, I'm not sure when she will, she's been talking to herself a lot through this game, but again, just enjoy it, just, you know, we, we've had a nice adventure together so far, and um, yeah, so this last one's going to take roughly about half an hour, about a half hour to 35 minutes to complete. Nice squidward looking tentacles. As if I was one of their own. Everything seems so distant now. 
as if I first stepped on that white beach thousands of years ago. A full moon? It can't be. Yesterday was... Yesterday was a new moon. Did I lose track of time, or...? Maybe this place isn't subject to the laws of physics. That's the only explanation I can find for this surreal night. It's hard to believe everything is real. Maybe it isn't. Maybe I'll open my eyes sometime and I'll be back in our home in Inglewood and... Everything will be as before. My perfectly ordinary life with Harry. My daily routines. My illness. That will be as before too. And then I'll need to shake off this strange feeling that I have now. The feeling that I don't really belong there anymore. And with there, I don't mean Englewood. Boston, or Newburyport. I mean... <sighs> How is it possible that the strange events of only two days on this island makes more sense to me than the life that I've been living for years? Sanctuary. So is this where you went, Harry? Was this your last stop? So here we are, Crunch's neck in emoji form. Let's do this then. So on the uh, first on the outside, there is quite a few collectibles that we are going to grab. So we're going to be just basically grabbing everything. So head up to this altar first, and on the right hand side of it, on the floor, is the syringe. Harry is either on the steroids or he's on the heroin. Why not both? And then take a look at this Petri dish with the black creamy goodness in it. Okay, so there's the first two um, bits of journal entry done. We're going to ignore that little bit of altar for now and go behind it to see the stairs. And what we're going to see is a handgun on the floor. So uh, <laughs> the heroin makes Harry do crazy things. To the left of it, there is a tiny bullet hole. So check that one out. And there is the blood splattered stain on the floor so check that one out as well and there's also the second bullet hole on the stairs sorry that's not a bullet hole that's a ring for some reason it looks like a bullet hole from here but uh, check that one out so that's the stairs done to so go directly behind you we're going to the camp now the tiny little camp area huh, that lion looks like he's got a leaf for balls um, so the first journal entry is actually getting into the camp and then what we're going to do is interact with these four items so there's a this scrumped up piece of paper in the bucket, probably acting as a bin, and there is three pieces of paper on this cloth here, so interact with all three of these as well. Again, like I've said, not every single one of these is gonna be um, counted for your journal entry, but once again, I always say it's better to be safe than sorry, just grab it all, because you don't wanna have to come through here again, even though you can just use chat to select and get it done in two seconds. You don't wanna do that anyway. So that should be that for this little area. Now, again, you can have a little explore if you want, but in terms of journal entries and everything, we can just carry on. So head again, sort of where the big bunch of stairs are, but we're going past the stairs and around the corner, and there should be another mural for us to collect. This mural seems to describe a ritual involving blood. That dagger. So from here, we're going to turn around and go directly. We're going sort of to the right of where the altar is, but we're heading to the left. Sorry if that just confused you. Have a look at this other little campsite. Open up the box and have a look at Mr. Potter taking a nap. Basically, the woman he was with started getting a bit creepy and stalkery. No doubt she rid his face when he slept, which nobody really complains about, really, do they? Anyway, have a look at this little fish thing. Uh, interact with it. And it's going to give us a free tattoo, which is pretty banging. I would enjoy that you know you have a little you have a little splinter but you get this wicked sort of tattoos on your hands and that yeah that'd be cool probably get ink poisoning but forget it at least your hand looks goddamn awesome so that is that for this bit what we're going to do now is head to the altar 
and um, interact with it. Interact with the bottom first. We're going to interact with the top then. And yeah, we're going to slice our hand open. Nice. Get a bit of blood going. But this is the one thing... You slice your hand open, you're going to be screaming and you're going to be in a lot more pain than that. Just trust me. Why does every bugger in film and every bugger in game go, eh, uh, oh well, right, I haven't got no pain in my hand now. Happy days. Be more realistic with it. Make him cry. <laughs> that really hurt. Because I'd cry because I'm a big baby. But that's good. So this is the basically the main room, the majority, where we're going to spend the rest of chapter six. And it can be confusing, but it's really not as bad. But the first thing we're going to do is interact with all four doors with the constellation signs on it. We're going to interact with them because all four of them gives us another journal entry, or four separate journal entries. So we've got the first two here, and then once we turn around, you will see, quite obviously, the next two. But stick with this left-hand side because before we get those other twos, we're just going to get another mural. And there should only be, I think, four murals left, one behind each locked door after this. So go to the left, you can see it, plain as day. Interact with that first, and then interact with the other two constellations. They carried these people here to test them. Like a challenge of some sort. Where is this door leading me? Shining constellation. I better draw it. So once that's done, then we're going to head into the sort of main puzzle area right now, where these sort of four stones are looking down on it. Interact with this uh, thing on the floor, and then look directly up and interact with the constellations and stars in the sky. That can once again easily be missed, so just make sure to get them to, and then with all interactable objects out of the way, we can now interact with the. Um, buttons on this stone right here and what what that will do is release these circular stones and so there's the two go to the opposite one and do the exact same so what we need to do is you've seen the four constellations on every door we need to basically copy those symbols to get that one door to open but only one door at the time can be open so you have to as we see now so we're going to go to the first one right here and go to the fourth one, the one that's already lit up, and then that will get one sort of pattern going. And then head to the one directly in front of us, and then do the same with that. So push the same button, the fourth button along, and what that will do is an automatic scene will happen, but that first door will open. So as I said now, what we'll have to do is go to the back of here, grab what we need to grab, come back, and then do the next one, and then this door will shut. So, very, very obvious. But make sure to grab the mural, which is on the right-hand side here first, and then just climb the stairs and get another free tattoo from the old fish thing. Beastie! What an odd structure. Riddled with nooks and crannies and endless stairways. Maybe it only hurts the first time. also hurts. When I arrived on this island, I felt like I was trespassing. But now, I feel like this is where I belong. So once we are back here then, head to the right a little bit, and this is the one that we are using. It's kind of hard to explain, so hopefully you can just follow along easy. Um, press the fourth symbol along there, that gets rid of one of the uh, lights. Go to the next one on the left, and then hit the fifth sort of symbol, which is on the right hand side. Again, I'm going from one to five from left to right, by the way, just in case you didn't get that. Then head to the next one on the left, the next circular stone and then hit that same fifth button again. That will change the pattern, and, and the second door will open. So, start heading towards that. Again, hopefully, 
I'm explaining things as I'm going, so hopefully you can keep up with me as I'm going along as well. Otherwise, apologies if it's all a bit much for you. But once the second door opens, the mural will be right in front of us. And once again, we're just heading up the stairs, getting our free tattoo. Bit of pain for a free fish face tattoo. Cannot beat it. And then head back down. Madness. But I, I don't feel the slightest hint of confusion. On the contrary, I feel my mind is more focused than ever. Oh, come on. One more time. So back here then at the circular stone. So what we're going to do now is just go around to the left. So ignore these two here. And we are going with this circular stone. Again, sorry, it's kind of hard to explain which ones you're going for. And then just go ahead and click the second symbol, which is already lit up now. Kind of like a Z one. And then just go to the left circular stone. The one right next to it on the left. And then click the fourth symbol. There we go. So with that one, we can back out and then once again, go to the left circular stone from that. And then we're going to click the second symbol again, and that should open up the next door for us. So once we do get through the next door, then we're going to head down these little steps here, go to the left, directly to the left and behind you, and that is where the next mural is. And there is only one left to collect before we get the achievement, and that is behind the next locked door, as long as, of course, you've been following along. Head to the portal. This is another swimming section, but again, it is all very, very easy. So once we're in the water, if you just swim straight ahead, you can just see a little gap in the wall that we're going to go through. Go to the portal on the other side, Get your fish face free tattoo and then head back. It's very easy once again this time. Again? Seriously? Ow! That hurt! Again! Now I know this game is set in the 1930s, but having tattoos like that is definitely the future. The future from 2020 anyway. Um, sadly, we still don't have that technology, which is, which is a goddamn shame. But anyway, straight in front of you, the circular stone. Go ahead, interact with the fifth, uh, the fourth, sorry, symbol. The fourth one, the sort of Y looking shape. Then go to the next one on your left. And we're going to interact, uh, interact with the fifth symbol, the C this time and then again back out we're going to go to the next symbol to uh, the next circular stone to the left now with this one you can actually you don't actually have to interact with this one um you can just leave it as it is i press the fifth symbol again but you can actually leave that one as it is and then go to the next left circular stone then press the fifth symbol and now the door should automatically unlock for you but if you've just done what I've done and make the mistake of pressing the fifth symbol on the one to the right of us, then of course we just got to go back and click that one. So click that one, that should go, and that's the fourth constellation door open. Hopefully that made a little bit of sense there as I made the mistake. Um, apologies though if I sort of <laughs> rambled on a bit. But anyway, 
the constellate the doors open hopefully we should all be good we're going to get the final mural now so head on up the stairs with a couple of steps again we're going to look directly behind us and to the right and this is where your mural achievement should unlock again if it doesn't you can have a look at chapter select and you can see which ones are missing with the collection timestamps down below in the comments section but if you've been following along lovely this is where you should get the achievement now this room is a little bit more complicated so there are three buttons uh, three black buttons and you can see the th there's three uh, kind of like dragon statues as soon as I uh, lift the camera up a little bit but each button um, interacts with and changes each separate one so and obviously it gets us a bridge so what we need to do here is we need to be heading to the left hand side to get a secret objective so if you press the second button and then the button on the right that actually moves the um oh, they're not dragons but i'm just calling them dragons for ease sake and then of course if you hit, hit the third one then another separate one will um transform and get a bridge up for us as you can see so it might be a little bit confusing first but what you need to do then is hit the second black button then the button on the right and we need to be heading to the right first of all so again, it may take a little bit of time to get used to, but again, as I'm sort of going along trying to explain. But what we need is, so hit that second button again, because we need the bridge to walk over and head to the right. And for some reason, sometimes the buttons can be kind of finicky. So there we go then, we've got the bridge up there. So as long as it's looking this way and looking to the right, we can now head on. Oh, they are doggies or dragons i don't bloody know <laughs> but there is now the ones that we can interact with the white ones so have a look at the right make sure that the dragons are looking like that which is good and the dragons at the back are sort of looking down and up and then get this third dragon looking to the left again hopefully hopefully you can see what i'm doing which makes it easier and i'm hoping that my words are making it a little bit easier as well uh, you know, again, like I said, my, my explanations are not too, not the best, but hopefully you are still carrying along anyway. So go ahead and do that. That will get the bridge interacting with the black one, so the black and white one there. So that is how it should look now. So from here should be looking left and right, and then the rest should be good to go as well. So now we can actually head back. And then what we're going to do is this first bridge, we are going to get the bridge now going to the left. So again, interact with the second button. Not the first one, the second. There it is, so make sure that one moves. And again, if you accidentally press the first one like I did, press it again so the dragon goes back into the correct position. Then hit the switch on the right, and now we should be good to go and this is how we get the secret objective so there's nothing left to do apart from follow the bridge for the moment so again hopefully i explained that enough so that you could sort of follow me there this one can be a little bit confusing as well especially if you're doing it on your own and all it is is the picture on the ground of it kind of reminds me of a call of cthulhu game so i'm going to call him cthulhu because why the hell not that will get us the candid photo achievement and there we go then but it's easy enough now so the original thing what we have to do is head to the back of the room to get our fourth free fish face tattoo and we can do that as easy as hitting the first button on the very left three times and then interacting with the button on the right and that's it then you can just walk all the way to the back so hit this button three times Hit the button on the right, and then we can walk to the back and get our fourth free tattoo. One more time.
So, we've done this. You think you're ready to open that fifth final door, completing the game? <gasps> Wrongo, schlongo, dongo. What we're going to be doing first is getting a missable achievement before we do that. So, from where we were, head straight to the circular stone with the one in front of us, and then hit the first symbol on the very left. Now what you need to do is go basically to the one on the right, but I ended up going all the way around. So miss the first two and then get this one. Um, the sort of fourth one, if you want to call it. Then hit the fifth symbol and hit it twice, actually, so that the symbol actually disappears. Then we're going to head to the right one now. And we are going to be hitting the first symbol on the very left, sort of bottom left there. So hit that one and then back out of that. Go to the left, miss this one out. We go into the next one. And go ahead and we'll be hitting the fifth symbol twice, the C on the right hand side. Hit that one twice, back out of it. Then go to the next circular stone on the left. Hit the very top one, the third symbol. And that is the missable achievement. We're going to take a look up at the stars now and it's a little, a little sort of Easter egg into one of the developer's other games, um, <laughs> which is very fascinating actually, but that basically gets us the otherworldly portal achievement. So of course do that before we enter this last door. So miss the first circular stone, go to the next one, and then hit the first symbol on the left. So that bit's done now. Head to the next circular stone on your left again. And this time we will be hitting the uh, third symbol at the very top there. Next, head to the next uh, left circular stone again. And then interact with the fourth symbol, the Y looking shape. And finally then for the very last one, head out of here once we've interacted with symbol number four. Go to the next left circular stone, interact with the fifth symbol and then that is that the fifth dot opens and if you followed the guide entirely as you've been doing you should get the i'll make a note of that achievement as well so as long as you've been following the guide you should unlock that achievement so hopefully you've done the same thing as well we're only about eight minutes away from the very end of the game now so make sure to interact with this black sludgy yum yum cum cum mirror so black icon that looks Disgusting, mate. You're freaking disgusting. Anyway, once we uh, have a look at this vision and it ends and we can start moving again, head to the left. It's kind of dark, but easy enough. Um, so, again, have a look at your notes and logs if you want. You should now be basically at 100% um, and have everything that I should have notes and log-wise. So, again, just if you want to have a little double check along with me, more than welcome to do that. Uh, but we are almost done. So head down these stairs, little bit of stairs here. It is quite dark, but if you look to your left, there should be another uh, portal, another sort of doorway or whatever the hell this is. And another achievement should unlock. This is where we should now be getting all of the logs achievements. So the amazing adventures of No, which is Nora. But from this point, you should have found now all of the story logs. Again, like I've said before if you haven't or if you've missed something have a look at chapter select and you'll it'll say at the bottom if there's anything that you are missing whether it's any murals or any secrets or anything like that but for now just keep walking forward until we get to the campfire at the very bottom but we are just a couple of minutes away Woo! from the game's end Is that you? No, 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 no! no. Don't tell me this is you, Harry. It can't be you. It can't be. No, no, no! What did you do? It. Oh my God, Harry! No! In the end, you performed the ritual. You, you poor fool. But why? I don't understand it! Why? You knew it! You knew it wasn't going to work! You knew the ritual wasn't going to work. That's... 
Why Harry Potter no look after his glasses? Wasn't that the source of his power? Or was it the thing in his head? I've never watched them, so... Me no no. Me no no, honey. But, that is the end. And we've got like a little epilogue to do as well. Um, so we'll pick up the music box right here. The achievement should now unlock for completing chapter six. There it is. Flachengarten. Flachengarten. Close enough. It's just it's the same stuff. And there's nothing to do in here. All we're going to do is head out of the door. What really happened? And it has everything that's all wrapped up in a neat little package. So just again, it's a it's a slower section, the slowest section of the game, but just keep walking forward for now. There is going to be one more missable achievement that we are going to get, and of course I will be back when we are getting to it. But I am sorry, I do have to laugh at how hilarious posh English people sound when they are pissed off, mind. It's not anger, it's hilarity, okay? So if you're posh and you get angry, just, I don't know, get a growl or something in there because it's too funny. What happened to Cassandra cleared up those doubts. The ritual wasn't for people like you. The ritual was only for people like me. But you refused to believe it until the island itself spoke directly to you. Haha, Falgarfen. She is our daughter. That's when you finally understood. You understood what my fate would be if I didn't come here and carry out the ritual. A slow and painful death. So you faked your own demise and left your glasses near Cassandra's corpse. Those same glasses you never take off. And you sent me the package from Dignity Perry, your picture, the key, the dagger. Another one of your scavenger hunts. And I took the bait. You made me come to this island, the same island where you almost lost your mind and your life. The same island where four members of your expedition perished. Why did you deceive me, Harry? You said you would never lie to me. Why didn't you tell me the truth? Why did you do this to me? Because you knew that I would never accept my fate if it meant leaving you. Right, my love? Not even if staying with you would mean a slow and painful death. So the only way to get me to leave you was to make me believe you were dead. And you chose to live a life without me, so I could be who I really am. That's why you chose. So this is important. There are basically two endings that we can choose. The one on the left is accepting your fate and leaving Harry, and going through the right door, basically, we stay with Harry, and, um, you know, basically live a life of lie and be miserable forever. But to get this missable achievement, and there's only one achievement related to an ending and that is for leaving harry you know saying you're a tosser mate we are off so accept your fate and leave harry this is the ending that we need so you can have a look at the right one there and that is re uh, reject your fate return home and live a miserable life but very importantly we are needing to uh, go through the left door accept your fate Leave Harry, because that guy's a knob. He's not really Harry Potter, because everyone loves that guy for some reason. I do too. Um, but yeah, so there's only one achievement related to the ending. If you want to come back, go through this again, have a look at the other ending. More than welcome to do that. There's probably a YouTube video, somebody's done both endings, because they are good guys like that. But this is where the missable achievement is now. So we're going to press the music box, go mad. We've still got the sort of chlamydia, leukemia shit on our hands, so that's forever. So we've accepted our fate. We're happy with that. But there is going to be a invisible path on the left-hand side. You're going to see in just a moment these sort of circular stones, big circular stones in the very distance. And there's going to be an invisible path on the left-hand side with a key that we just need to interact with. That is it. And if you keep looking on the left, you can probably just see 
very, very faintly where the path is. So sort of stick to the left hand wall and just keep sort of pressing left until you can start going on it. You can see um, the sort of how very faint the path is, but look below, keep walking on it and this is where the key is. And that is the meta reference achievement. You can only get this key, I believe, if you pick this ending as well. If you pick the other ending, I don't think you can come here. So you'd have to go through the game anyway to come or through the chapter to get back to this point. So there we go. Walk on back and then keep on walking forward. And that is basically then the end of the old gammings. Hooray. What an adventure, eh? Oh, what an adventure, me old posh tart. Me old bean. No trace of pain, no trace of sickness. Nothing besides this place. It's so pleasant to forget everything else. Nothing matters anymore. I'm finally one of the thousands of minds connected to the icon. Connected with the Elder God. So here, just keep swimming forward, and the credits are basically eventually going to roll, and that is that. Now, there is going to be, after the credits roll, you will get the achievement for completing the game, and then there's going to be one achievement, which I don't show in the video because I already did it um, in the video earlier on, and that is literally just for replaying a chapter. That is all you've got to do. So select literally any chapter as soon as you start it off it takes literally five seconds for it to unlock so make sure to do that and then that will be the game complete so again thank you so so much for watching guys and gals i do hope that you had a great time with this game and this guide hope you had a good couple of laughs on the way as we always do don't forget of course to like comment and subscribe check me out on all my um socials as well i'm on twitter instagram and if you do want to watch this video ad free of course go to my patreon link and just take a look below all the descriptions are in the description box descriptionally below but thank you so very very much uh, the achievement should unlock by the way here for completing the game it's after the credits and uh, again big shout out as well to timg84 for continuing to support the show on patreon and thank you so much to all my other patreon supporters as well but that is that guys and gals thanks once again for watching i'll see you in the next one big love such a high price for my deceit more fate has punished me with a long and sorrowful life with no other incentive than my work because that is the only thing I have now, my dear old pal.